Hi, this is the Nuclear Rabbit and today I am going to be playing a Spirazon because, well, I am gonna get this one at some point as I almost die in the Tower Cellar. So what makes this run so hard? As you can tell because it's the Tower Cellar again and I almost died again. So that's two almost death moments and I haven't even reached the counters yet. So what makes this run so hard is first off the request was, because I know I'm gonna get this in the comment, to do a Spirazon with Impale and Fend. I don't know if it was intended to not do Jab, but I'm not doing Jab. And after farming the counter we go ahead and get ourselves a stealth and move along where the outer cloister has a door full of things for us waiting. As you can tell this is already quite a slog as we make our way towards Ontario. Who we can actually impale because that's the one thing impale does well. It does very well against act bosses like look at those chunks. Then for act 2 we move along until we hit the arcane sanctuary where you can tell that if we get cold damage that things go really slow and we are stuck. And things get pretty tight because I hit 10 HP and get stuck again because of the summoner. But we do one shot him and then we move along towards Duriel. And once again as you can tell the impale just really chunking him like that's a lot of damage to deal to Duriel. So there he goes. Cesark also a risky moment. He can hit me really hard. I can hit him really hard. So it's just a matter of who hits who first. Fire is also really dangerous. As you can tell by that shaman almost toasting me. And then we make our way towards the council. And you can tell from talk that Impale slows things down. And I just really want my mercenary to stay alive here. So yeah, just running away a bit when I get surrounded. Just to make sure that I, well, don't get surrounded. Because that's very lethal. And just impaling them. Stoneskin is annoying, which is why I'm doing talk last. But Impale just very good in one-on-one. -on -one. Like, there are a few problems with this build. But doing the one-on-one -on -one fights and the boss fights, definitely not one of the problems. This build's very good at that. Main problems being that, well, spears have insanely high requirements. Like, the requirements on spears are insane. Also, doll, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stand back. I decide to imbue a maiden spear that the dolls just dropped so i get soul needle here which does a bit of damage but it has repair one durability so i just still run out of durability all the time because that's just not enough for this skill because what impale does it deals a lot of damage and the trade off for that is that it absorbs your durability really fast but yeah also mephisto just chunking him and finding a rare pike which will automatically be more damage like a pike just deals so much damage i end up finding an odd rune in the plains of despair as we make our way towards a fasto the armorer go ahead and smash the hellforge like you should smash that like button which brings us to the chaos sanctuary where once again things are just gonna get impaled i mean we are three shotting the grand vizier of chaos that is no easy feat and almost two shot of the lord of the size but we dodge the infector and his minions here a bit and just work on the crowd one by one because well aoe is not a thing in the vocabulary of this build and i know you can spec it to like charge strike and stuff but that was not the request for this build and with that it's diablo time and well slow is really good against act bosses so as long as i stay out of the lightning just circle around him a bit try and lure him out even the mercenary is still alive that kind of surprises me actually and there he goes jet yeah, diablo really slow just because of the impale it just slows an enemy which might even be a bigger factor in why it's so good against bosses because slow just destroys things in this game like slow is one of the best mods in the game i mean a lot of people just don't know it but slow is that powerful like look at him he's literally just standing still dodge some more lightnings i mean look at that speed like it's just a loot pinata at this point just poke the spear on the diablo Dodge some more lightning. And just run in there. You have all the time to do it. Like it even cancelled his slap there. He wanted to slap me. But needed to do it again. Because well the animation just cancelled. He was too slow. I mean it's just easy pickings at this point. Which doesn't happen a lot with Diablo normal. Like that's usually one of the hardest fights in the game. But the Spearzon does do very well against it. I end up finding sad boots. Those are Tancrits. And I also end up finding a soul rune in the bloody foothills. Which means that once I hit level 29. Because I'm not there yet. I can get a lore very easily. I make my own Shaco. And go ahead and farm some Eldritch. Until I hit level 29 for the lore but those are my stats right now i also gamble a bunch of stuff because especially when you're playing a very grindy run like this you will have enough gold and stuff you will gamble a lot go ahead and almost get pimp slapped by trash socket here as we move ahead towards the frozen river to go and save anya and you can really start to tell that just crowd control is not a thing so you're very dependent on just using the area so the downside to impale against the ancients is that it slows down talik who because of the slow can whirlwind you a lot but we do manage to take him down and then it's just a matter of poking Maddox and moving along to the Worldstone Keep where we get greeted by these Deathlords. 
And I'm gonna be honest, Dead Lords are a better class than a Spearson. If I could choose to spec into being a Dead Lord or a Spearson, I would choose the Dead Lord every single time. So we reset that after running away and make our way towards the minions of destruction in the throne of destruction, who, well, bluntly said, kick my ass. So I start luring them out. And you know you're playing one of the good builds when you can't beat the minions of destruction in normal. You just know like, yeah, I'm playing a winner here. So yeah, this is the fourth attempt for me at this build. It's the only build that has taken me this many attempts. Like I've had a few two tries and one three tries, but four tries, man, it's rough. But after splitting them up, we are able to take down Lister the Tormentor, who wasn't really noticing our slow at all. And then we head towards Bale, who just immediately spawns a clone. So we run away, despawn the clone, and he makes another one. And after that, we move in and we get him slowed down a bunch so he doesn't make clones anymore and we just start poking him down and i know this is gonna sound silly because this is fast forwarded and stuff but this was actually a really solid bail fight like i wish impale didn't do the durability thing because then it would be a very solid boss farmer and no it wouldn't beat charge strike i end up finding a unique ring from bail which turns out to be a raven frost that is the literal best in slot item for this build i mean we've got to run now it has cannot be frozen cold absorb i am level 33 though so it's gonna take a while it has stats mana it's just the perfect item like if you look up a build guide for this it will advise you to wear a raven frost that's how good it is i end up finding some boots with resist and mf as well as i make my way into nightmare for the first time because i need runes and levels and the best way to get them is to just go into nightmare however i fail miserably at it so I go back into normal, go and farm some terror zones. End up finding a bike so I can make an M tier for a strength, which has 35 ET and some crushing blow and life reach. And make my way towards Pindle, because well, that's just the best way to level in normal. I mean, terror zones are cute and all, but just doing players 8 Pindle is just the fastest way to level. I also ended up gambling a chromatic coronet, so once I hit level 41, I'm gonna use that for 26 resist. And I end up finding a amulet in the disused vein terror zone and i find a tankrus and remember those boots i found those were tankrus as well so i get the set bonus which is 78 better chance of getting magic items like we really have a run going here i also end up finding a belt which is a night smoke that's 10 resist all and one of the biggest problems with using a spear is that your resists are really bad so finding a 10 resist all belt is fantastic the terror zones also grant me a hell rune and once i hit a really high level i go ahead and go back into nightmare where i end up farming the counters a bunch because i need a lot of runes i also end up finding a fine small charm of creed so these are the runes i found i've literally just done so many counters runs that i made another page on the stash i make a piece for plus two skills but mostly for the valkyrie i I also find a Saigon's helmet and craft some heavy gloves before making my way towards Andariel. We are just poking down with the three of us. And we make our way towards the sewers for Radamont as well. With the poke family all going at him, he goes down while exploding for 400 damage. And then it's time for the maggot lair. And there's just nothing different about the maggot lair. I don't have AoE whatsoever, so I have to take every enemy one at a time. So it makes just no difference to be in the maggot lair. So I go ahead and make my way towards Cold Worm the Burrower, who drops me a serpent skin armor. Man, we really have a run going here. Because that is a Viper Magi. It's a 25 resist one, the range is 20 to 35, but still, it's a 25 resist all armor, I'll take it. I also end up making a 5 socket maiden pike, before making my way towards the tall rush's tomb, where I drop a battle staff. And the item lock just keeps going, because this thing is so cool. I don't know what to do with it, but it's so cool. It's plus 3 energy shield, plus 2 the meteor 4 socket staff. And of course, after the tall rush's tomb, follows Duriel. So with everybody being slowed down to an absolute tier, we make our way through his life total. And there's just so much slow on impact that he's barely attacking like i know that he's still doing some attacks but it's not in combat to what he's doing usually so a few more pokes to go but my life total hasn't even moved in this entire fight it's so free with an impaler's on and he drops us a set amulet and it's a da -da -da -da, it's a tell rashes amulet <laughs> So yeah, I found a Tell Rashes amulet on this run as well. So I basically found a complete sorcerer's equipment before making my way into Act 3 for the Flayer Dungeon where some fanaticism soul killers had my way and some fanaticism dolls. And it's followed up by more dolls. Oh, and in the upper chorus, I find a long staff, and it turns out to be a wailing long staff of teleportation. So it's a teleport staff, and I end up equipping it. 
So I can use teleport, but uh, I'm just kidding. I don't like using it at all. So I go ahead and sell it to Ormus instead. I don't like teleport staffs. I make my way towards the console on foot again. And yes, I know a teleport staff would be better to use. I know all the speedrunners, all the cool people do it. I don't like it. So we go ahead and separate the council members. And we first start with Galab, Ismail. We are trying to keep separated, but they are just clumping together. Luckily for us, they split up, but Torx joins the fight. So we just run away a bit and run back in and they're still just all clumped together because of the slow that is not separating. They're not fast enough to separate so that's the problem here. But they are so slow that they're not that dangerous so I just start impaling them. And with Thor going down they're all down. So we head into the Durans of Hate where the dolls are alive again. Even though they're caught on that. So there's a unique doll in there. He is lightning enchanted and killing my mercenary. So that means only one thing. Run away. And I made my way back from the entrance. So I walked all the way back and then just killed them from the side. And that was very easy. They just came at me one on one. Just like Mephisto here. Who is just being well cold, blue, slow and sad. So yeah, he is just completely controlled at this point. Like there's no threat at all. He won't do most of his attacks. He's just standing there basically waiting to be destroyed. So there he goes and we make our way and we go ahead and craft our next weapon because I now have the rune. So that's ML it tier soul, which makes an honor. It gives enhanced damage, deadly strike, attack rating, damage. And we need that because we weren't getting through act four in any other way. Like even with this weapon, I mean, you can tell the damage is just not great, but we do just easily clown on Isual. So yeah, just keeping it slow and steady, winning the race. And we head into the River of Flame where he faster the armor is waiting for us. He is spectral hit and aura enchanted and the scary part of it is definitely the aura with the fire enchant. Because when he explodes, he deals a lot of damage. So I go ahead and walk back a bit. Because I can very easily die to him dying. Then for the Hellforge. We get a perfect amethyst, a topaz, another topaz and a co-rune. And that is the start of an excellent weapon for obedience. Because you need Hellcothal at fall for that. But I mostly want to make that in a man catcher. So I can use it till the end of the game. Because obedience is very powerful. But a big part of its power is the massive amount of enhanced damage on it. Because it's the best one in comparison with its damage, its requirements and its speed. But we can only find them in either high level terror zones, in Nightmare or in Hell. So we will need to make our way there. In the meanwhile we are just working our way through the Chaos Sanctuary. Getting rid of all the minions in there. And head towards Diablo who as usual in Nightmare is just a matter of just stand next to him and very easily kill him. Because as you can tell his lightning can't hit me. They just programmed it wrong. So what they did was for Nightmare they wanted to increase the range of the lightning. But they just stretched it out and the area that isn't hit just grew as well. So you can just stand in there and be safe. With Diablo going down he drops us some mesh boots and those are amazing finds. Those are Natalia Soul. 50 resist all and stuff and we craft ourselves an amulet because we got rid of the Tancred's boots so we get rid of the amulet as well and we replace the amulet with a 10 resist all amulet and make our way towards the ancient with whom we have a 3 on 3 fight and here as well I have to be careful cause one of them is fire enchanted and when he explodes I could die but the rest of them are basically free I mean just look at Maddox just standing there getting poked and dying and Talak as well, he has teleportation. And eh, whatever, that's fine. Just Korlik is the danger here. But the slow made it so that Talak did a lot of whirlwind damage to my mercenaries. And now we're back to a 2 on 2. And here we are in perfect harmony, stabbing them together. And look at how much damage that did. That fire enchant there. I mean, I almost got one shot there. So yeah, Fire Enchanted, extremely dangerous in Nightmare. It's not as bad in Hell. And of course the World Stone Keep is occupied by souls with might. Because what else is new? Of course there are souls in there. So I work my way through them one by one. Just using my position around the corner just to try and get some space in between them. And I do need to pass them because there's either the waypoint or the exit behind them. Turns out it's the waypoint. And for the Throne of Destruction, Lister and his minions show up again. And while we were very easily capable of getting rid of the others, we do have some problems with Lister, so we have to lure him out. And as usual, just split him up. And then do a quick run around and head towards the bail fight. 
who we just once again impale, he slows down and that makes the fight basically free. I mean just look at this, he isn't teleporting, he isn't doing most of his spells, it's just, well, free. Yeah, I really wish there was a better use case for the impaler song, because she is really good at boss fights. I'm seriously wondering, could she do ubers? I mean I can't even beat the game with her, but could she do ubers? Also I'm punching now, because impale ate my durability. And I punch Bill down, just with the bare fist, just punch to the face, be gone with ye. After that I start preparing for hell, so I start farming Mephisto and I end up finding a mesh armor. Which is a shaft stop and that is just amazing, it's 30% physical damage reduced and some other stuff as well. So once I hit the strength for that I'm definitely gonna use that. I also end up finding a unique ring, but this time it's a Nagel ring and not a, another Ravenfrost. And I'm basically just hitting up either Terror Zones or Mephisto at this point. Because I need items, I need experience. A big part of why I need experience is because I just want to be high level so that Terror Zones get higher level. I also end up finding this Maiden Pike with 40 IAS, 1 skill and a lot of enhanced damage. And I find a Hyperion Spear and you're like, why wouldn't you use this one? Well, first of all, it only gets 4 sockets, but look at those requirements, those are insane. My Mercenary becomes very useful in that corner over there. And everything goes well in the Terror Zones, as you can tell by my life total, dropping down to a whopping 56. So yeah, lots of near death moments in this, even though I'm very over leveled at this point. So yeah, also hitting the counters, where I find a Umbrune. Because it was terrorized, that's why it dropped it. It just already switched to the next terror zone. This was like at the edge of the terror zone. So back to Mephisto we go, where I find a heavy belt. And shark skin boots and shark tooth armor. I basically found a shark. But they are plus 50 life, so I'm like, eh, do I want that over 50 resist? And I decide not to. Would you have, like, I could see it going either way. Like dexterity plus life or double resist. Like both are really good. I end up finding the Saigon's belt, so if I want to use the Saigon's combo I can now for the attack rating on the helmet. I make my way towards Pindle Skin where I find some chain gloves with dual leech and lightning resist. And with that we are level 71 and heading into hell. So this is my gear right now, just all of it is focused on resist, my weapon doesn't give any. Which is also why I favored the mesh boots from Natalia over the Waterwalks. And starting for hell, we head into the den of evil of course, where we fight corpse fire, before making our way into the catacombs, where I just start running around. At this point there's a lot of stuff here that I can't really efficiently kill, so I'm just like, okay, I have resist, I have life, but that is way too dangerous, I don't want to do that. So I save and exit and run in again, I'm just like, come on, get me to Andariel, I want to farm Andariel, I, I should be able to do it, that shouldn't be a problem here at all. So I just run around, and as you can tell, this is fine, like all of this is fine, I just enter this door and I'm like, nope. So I save and exit and this happens. I get slain in the fucking loading screen. It's so sad. Like I hated this death. Like you can see me dying in the main screen. Like why? Why is this a thing? Has this happened to anyone else? So I check the recording and I'm like, okay, how much life did I have? And you can tell that it's definitely still red when I leave the game. Like, I had life in my pool. I have literal frame-perfect a shot of me having life while leaving the game. But I'm dead. So yeah, that's the end of that run. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.